Okay, uh, this little series is uh, just showing you jQuery Mobile. And at first I was trying to just make jQuery Mobile showing you basic features of it, but they seem kind of simple and straightforward. There's a jQuery Mobile site that basically shows you everything. So I thought instead of showing you how to do individual things, we'll just start creating real world applications. Uh, I have been asked to do this in my tutorials in the past. I, it's something I usually try to avoid doing. I'd much rather show you the technique than actual practice because actual practice is going to change from person to person. Um, but basically we're going to create a little application that would work on a desktop, tablet, phone, whatever device. Um, and it's going to allow you to, in the end, uh, scan uh, a barcode uh, and it will bring up the application and basically we're going to be taking uh, with firefighters we have our air bottles which are called SCBA bottles and this is a little uh, uh, program that will allow us to submit that we've been checked we've checked them and that the air pressure is okay in them where I work this is something we do uh, well we check them every day but we actually fill out paperwork on them once a week uh, so the person in charge of them can keep track of where the bottles are and um, and whether they're maintaining their pressure. Uh, right now, all that information is filled out on pieces of paper, which gets, gets shoved in a file. Um, we're going to create the application, so it saves it to a spreadsheet. Um, and that will allow the user, the person who keeps track of this stuff, to track whether uh, the bottles it can tr detect, you know, this one keeps becoming low, it probably has a slow leak, or something like that, or just where the bottles are. And to do this, um, in most cases when you make an application like this, you'd want to use a database like uh, MySQL or something like that. But I'm actually just going to use Google Docs and put them into a spreadsheet. The reason for this is um, once the information's entered, it's not like the end user is going to be modifying that information. It's basically submitting, so we don't have to worry about modifying it. Any modifications will be made by the person who keeps track of the bottles. And that person um, is going to be a non-technical person, and they're going to want it in a spreadsheet anyway because these type of people love spreadsheets. Um, Plus, you know, with the fire department, you may not have a server, you may not, you know, have a website. Even though those things only cost a few dollars, fire departments tend to be slow when it comes to technology. Google Docs is free to use, you can back it up, it goes right into a spreadsheet. Uh, and if you need to grab information later on for, from the application, you can always share it as an SCV and, and dice through it later on. But I don't really see uh, the need for that in this scenario unless you're trying to make an application that charts something out. Uh, in which case you could probably just do that within Google Docs as well. Um, anyway, that was enough talking. Now that I've talked for like three minutes, let's dive right in. Uh, we're going to go create, we're going to go form, and we'll say just get started, choose a theme, doesn't really matter. I'm going to grab the blue header one because I like that. And then uh, Google Docs makes it really easy to make form. I'm going to make a text thing here, and there's certain uh, bits of information we need. We need uh, the user, that would be the person who's filling out the form, um, so we know who checked the bottle. We'll add an item here where it'll say um, what station they are at. Uh, we will ask what truck they are checking out because stations can have more than one truck at them. We're going to ask uh, for the, the pressure of the bottle, whether it's good or bad. Uh, we like our bottles to be over 4,500 uh, PSI. So we'll just say PSI here, and we'll give it a, either a, a full or low. Um, and then we also want comments. So that way, if there is a problem, uh, we'll make that a paragraph. Um, if there is a problem, they can explain the problem. Uh, and I think that's all the information we need. You also would want the time and date, but luckily Google Docs automatically time and date stamps all submissions. Let's give this uh, form a name. We'll just call it SCBA uh, Bottle Check. And we'll say Bottle Check because there's also the packs that the bottles go in that also need to be checked. And we'll also make an application for that when we're done with this one. Um, then... Uh, we can go live form to see what it looks like, and we can say, uh, I'm Chris, I'm at station 22, I'm on engine 22, the PSI, 
the bottle is full. I can say hello, and I can say submit. And it submits, and it gives you this little screen here. We're gonna go back here, and we're gonna go um, choose response destination. So this is where you decide where the output, the, the submits go. We're just gonna say, we're gonna create a spreadsheet that says uh, that it's the bo SCBA bottle check responses. We'll create that and if we go back to our Google Drive here you can see uh, right here we've got the, uh, oh that's the form. Let's refresh the screen here. There we go. Uh, so we have our form. We can go and edit the form anytime and here's the bottles and you can see right there it automatically puts a timestamp. Dismiss that. Uh, it gives you a nice little view of the user station, truck, PSI, and any comments which we can also stretch out because comments might be kind of long. Um, and you're probably going, uh, why are you doing a tutorial on this? This is really simple. There's no need for a tutorial. Um, let's just put another name here. We'll say Mike. We'll say Station 23, Engine 23. We'll say that this bottle is low. We won't even put a comment here. We'll click Submit. also want to mention that when you're creating the form, there's an option to make these certain things required. And that would be good if we were actually going to use this form, but we're not going to. And we don't want to make that required because um, you're going to want to do any uh, error checking with your in your own code. But you can see automatically within a few seconds, everything shows up in the spreadsheet here. So people could be submitting stuff and the end user can just see them popping up in here. You know, the guy that's maintaining the bottles. So now that we've created this form and it's going into there, now what we're actually going to do is go and actually write out our own form for multiple reasons. One, because you get this stupid little uh, uh, thanks here, and we don't want that. We want this to be very efficient. So we also want it to be very efficient for mobile devices. We also want it to be uh, able to scan barcodes. Where actually, our application is not going to scan barcodes, but you're going to scan a QR code that will bring up our application and automatically put in the ID of the bottle, which is something I forgot to put into here. So let's uh, add an item. Actually, let's um, edit this one. Make this text. We'll say uh, really, this should have been further up. I forgot to uh, put that in here. Uh, can The reason I'm changing the order here is because I, I, I want the comment to be the last thing in our spreadsheet. So here we'll make this a paragraph and we'll say comment. Done. Okay. So now we can go to our live form and you can see that it's changed there. Um, and really it doesn't matter at that point as far as where things are going to put because we change that, that's going to mess up our spreadsheet because this is now our bottle ID. So we'll shrink that back down and the comments will make up wide. So that was my little mistake there. We can actually delete these first few uh, delete rows. I mean, it's not a big deal. We could have put the bottle ID at the end and really I would prefer it to be up here before the username, but uh, not a big deal either way because that's just, once again, the person who's checking everything with the spreadsheet as far as the actual form, we're going to create one now. So we've done the simple boring part of the tutorial. Now we're going to get into the jQuery HTML5 uh, and JavaScript, uh, jQuery mobile part of everything. So let's go to jQuerymobile.com. And in here you can go and you can download the latest stable version. But instead of just downloading that, the way I like to start is I go to themes, which brings up their theme roller which makes it very easy for you to make colored themes and it gives you a little example code to start with. So we're going to say get rolling. So you have different themes here, A, B, C, you can create more. I'm going to make B a red theme. Now it's going to look real ugly here, but we're never actually going to use this theme in this scenario, um, you know, for the entire uh, form. It's just if we want a red, oops, I forgot for some reason the that button. Yeah. Right there, that's good enough, or maybe this blue. There we go. Um, if we want a red button, a red header, anything red, we're going to call B, uh, theme B. This is the way I do things. Uh, you may do things different. I'm going to go blue here, blue here, 
and blue here. So we have a blue theme because there is a point where I'm going to have a red button and a blue button and I can call different themes. So now also uh, at this point, I already have um, my terminal logged into my web server. I'm in a folder. Uh, there's nothing in this folder at this point. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go download. I'm going to go, I can call it whatever I want, SCBA. And I'm going to say download zip. Now this download zip file is temporary. So this URL is only temporary. So what we're going to want to do is going to grab it here real quick. I'm going to uh, copy the address and I'm going to say wget and paste in that URL. And now we just downloaded that zip file. So I'm going to unzip that. And you can see an unzipped a uh, couple of folders with the themes and gave us a basic HTML uh, index file to begin with. So uh, at this point, what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, go to my website uh, here in my browser. I'm going to click on SCBA. That's our folder. This is what that default theme looks like. Uh, so now I can say Vim index HTML and I can come in here and I can start editing the example code. Let me knock down the size of that a little bit so I, things don't wrap around too much. And first thing we're going to want to do is change the title. We'll say SCBA check, let's say bottle check. Okay. And then in here we have our main uh, page because you can have different pages here. And what I'm going to do is I am going to say, I'm going to delete a couple of these rows that we don't need. And I'm going to change the title here, the header here to bottle check form. We'll save that. Let's go back to our web browser here and refresh. So we got rid of all the stuff in there, but we got our main, um, you know, header section here, which later on we're going to be adding our own JavaScript code to uh, using uh, mostly jQuery. And then we have our little content area here. And you can see that by default we're using theme A, which is our basic gray look. So let's start writing out our code. And I'm going to create a label. And I'm going to say bottle inventory, if I spell everything right, ID colon. And this is the label for our um, input. So I'm going to say input. Now, uh, the input type here is only going to be a number because it's the bottle inventory number. So I'm just going to say the type is number. What this does for us is, um, well, it gives us a little scroll bar. Well, I'll show you in a second. Let's give this an ID of bottle value equals, um, oh, we're not going to give it a value. We're going to assign it a value here in a little bit. Um, so right now I'm just going to save that. And if we come back in here and refresh, you can see we have bottle ID, inventory ID. We have a input box here, but you notice it has these little scroll bars and it allows you to scroll up and down. But another great thing about this is on a mobile device, instead of bringing up a regular keyboard, it's going to bring up a number pad, making it easier to type in that inventory number. But we're also going to set it up so we can pass our, our information to this page. Um, but real quick here, let's add in our other stuff. Now these next few items, I'm going to hard code into the code. Um, but in reality, if you're creating an application like this, um, where you're going to be interacting, you're probably going to be writing a lot of small applications, uh, where you're going to request some of the same information, in this case, user station and trucks, we would actually create another application before we do this. Uh, kind of like a contact list with an, all the employees, all their information, and save all that to a database. Same with the stations and trucks. And at that point, we can request all that information from the database using PHP, and then input it here, have it automatically alphabetize everything. And that way, 
if we have all these different applications, you add a user, you know, a new employee, or we build a new station or buy a new truck, add that to the database, and all your applications automatically update rather than going to have to modify the code. But just for this tutorial, we're going to manually type in all this stuff. So we're going to say select ID equals user. And we're going to give it an option with a value. We'll say John Smith and it will display John Smith. Now the value is what's going to be submitted to the form. The inner HTML here is actually going to be what the user sees. Uh, so if you know the information needs to be submitted different, um, you can do that. But in this case, it's going to be the same because it's just the username. Before I forget, I'm going to close our select tab or tag here. And I'm going to paste that three times. Now, obviously, you're probably going to have more employees than this. Um, but once again, whoops. Um, this is just example. And normally, you would pull this information from a database. Mike Jones. I uh, will say Sam Johnson. And of course, we'll change this information here as well. Mike Jones, Sam Johnson. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing for the truck, our station and truck. So select ID equals station. Let's close our select tag before we forget. Let's say option value equals station 20. The viewer, the user will see station 20 in the drop down. If I could type today. And real quick, we will. So I'm just copy and paste that line a few times. Change the information for each one. And we will do the same things for the truck. And this would be example. I'm just going to put the truck names as the value, but our trucks also have inventory numbers. So you could see engine 20 in the drop down, but when it passes the information to the form, it could put the inventory number instead if that's what you prefer. And again, all this information would normally come from a database, which we don't have in this case. Oh, what am I doing? This should say truck. And that should say select, not selectual. That's where color coding comes in handy. You can see your mistakes a little bit easier. Uh, option value equals engine 20, engine 20. Why do I keep doing that? My fingers are going faster than they should be. Okay. And again, I'm just going to put an engine at each station, but in reality, you could have more than one station. You might have an attack or a squad truck at a different station, not just an engine. You could have a pumper as well. But just to keep this simple. Um, so next we will have, well, let's save this and have a look at what we're working on here F five to refresh. So we have our inventory number that goes here. We can go John Smith, Mike Jones, choose who that is, uh, and then choose a station and an engine. Um, next we're going to ask, uh, whether the, um, uh, let's ask for a comment at this point. So we're going to say, 
label comments label close our tag there um, and then we'll say text area with an ID of now if you're not familiar with um, JavaScript and HTML well, hopefully you know a little bit before you jump into this tutorial I should have said that at the beginning um, the reason we're getting everything IDs is because the JavaScript's going to retrieve the information from different elements based on their ID. So now we have comment box, which by default is resizable, which is nice. And of course, on a mobile device, they should be able to hit the microphone uh, and speak a comment in there rather than having to type. Or you can type using a keyboard if that's what you prefer. Uh, let's now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to ask whether the bottle is uh, low, the pressure is low, or if it's full. Um, and instead of doing a drop down, we're just going to make that two different buttons, either it's low or it's full. We also want to uh, give it a um, a uh, uh, different color, and that's where our different themes come into play. So let's give it a label here so the user knows what we're asking. We're going to say PSI over, and as I said at my department, with the bottles we use, over 4,500 PSI label. So it's asking, is it over? And so we're just gonna give them yes or no buttons. Um, but let's uh, do this first. We're gonna create a div tag. We're gonna say class equals UI-grid-A and what that's doing is that's part of the uh, jQuery mobile and it's just going to give the layout of our buttons uh, instead of them going expanding the full width and having a button above and below I figured have each one next to each other because um, we don't need full width screen width buttons um, so at this point, I'm going to now create our buttons, and they're going to be in their own little div tags here. Div class equals UI dash block dash A. We're going to say our button has an ID of low. We're going to say data dash theme equals B and we'll say no. Close our button tag and close that div tag as well. I'm going to quickly, to save time in the tutorial, just copy and paste, but we're going to change this from block A to B. Instead of <coughs> low, I'm going to say full. High might have been a better option, but. I've already started this, so see, and we're going to change this from no to yes. So if you remember correctly, if we go back here and go to our theme roller, theme B is red, theme C is blue. So now you can see that our no button is theme B, so our no button should be red. Uh, so it's not over 4,500, so that's not good, it's low and uh, our yes button will be blue uh, and we are also these buttons are also going to be what's going to submit the form so as soon as they click that boom it's going to submit the form and it will clear out uh, both the comments and the inventory id the rest of it not only will it not clear out but it will also save to local storage on the device so that they can come back later because most of the time you're at the same station working on the same truck you know, if you're working on your phone or whatever. Um, of course, it could always be changed. Uh, so real quick, we'll go here, refresh our page. So we got our inventory number we can put in here. We can say Mike Jones, Station 20, Engine 24, type something here. And we can click no or yes. Right now, neither button does anything because our form is completely done. The visual GUI portion of this tutorial is done. Next, we're going to be working on the actual coding. We're going to be working mostly on JavaScript. And we're also going to throw in a little bit of PHP 
um, to allow us to grab the bottle ID from a barcode scan. So come back one week from today and the next tutorial will be up and we will complete this application. We got kind of the tedious part, at least what I would consider the tedious part, the design part out of the way. For me, coding is a lot easier. Um, it's making stuff look nice, uh, which is the difficult part. And uh, on a phone, if I take this, it would look more, oops, didn't mean to pull that out, but I did. Uh, on your phone, it'd probably look more like this. <laughs> so, all right, unless you turn your phone sideways and then it's that way. So, okay, uh, be back in one week as we finish up this little application that will take all this information, submit it to our Google Doc, clear out certain things, store certain things to local storage, and uh, also grab the information that's passed to it from uh, a QR code. Thank you for watching, and please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. Hope this tutorial wasn't too long and boring. I try to keep them short, which is why I try not to do uh, full applications like this in my tutorials. But every once in a while, uh, I think uh, some viewers like this sort of thing. So let me know below, uh, do you prefer short little tutorials on individual items or do you like occasionally having uh, me go through a full small application but something more than just one simple task um, I personally when I watch tutorials prefer one simple task I hate when I'm looking for figure out how to do one thing I go to a tutorial and it's a half an hour long like this one probably is and I'm like man I just want to see how to do the one thing but based on viewer comments seems like occasionally at least I should do a tutorial like this it's kinda long um, plus, as I said, with jQuery Mobile, I kind of wanted to teach it, but it seemed kind of redundant since their website is so well documented. I mean, so incredibly well documented that I just felt like I was copying their website doing tutorials. Uh, and I thought maybe a little more practical use of them. So I will be doing more on jQuery Mobile similar to this um, with other elements because there's plenty of elements of jQuery Mobile. Um, but... Uh, probably not a whole lot of them. But comment below, let me know what you think. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Be sure to come back next week as we finish up this little program. And have a great day.